Hey, what's up, party people? Welcome to a belated but still on time episode of Oz Trailer Commentaries. Uh, we're talking about Andor and slash or uh, one of my favorite shows of the year. Uh, so this is going to be one of those videos. Buckle up. Uh, we're going to talk about say nice stuff. Yeah, yeah we're going to say nice things. We're going we're gonna to talk about the show, uh, watching Australia together, start and stop as we have things to say. We have deleted scenes. We got some comments and questions from you, the viewer. So keep those coming in the chat. And then we'll tease you with next week's Honest Trailer. Uh, the entire hierarchy of power <laughs> at Honest Trailers, folks. It's about to change next It's about week. to change. I'm just yeah. going to put that out there. So I was going to say, next week's Honest Trailer sounds like a movie that Kyrie Irving would share, but it's not like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. so it's a little different. Uh, anyways, those are your clues. So we'll skip There's that a circle oh. of guys on Broadway and DTLA right now that can't <laughs> wait to tell you their theories about it. Yeah, about very this excited. One. Very excited. Um, let's talk about Andor. Um, <laughs> Gosh, I love this show. I thought this was so good. Uh, the the acting, the 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 dialogue, which is a huge uh, surprise from a Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and I do like other Star Wars stuff, but not like this. Um, obviously, the original trilogy is great and groundbreaking, and everything else has been various levels of entertaining and enjoyable, but not good, not meaty. This was like get get your meat, your not just your meat and potatoes, but your vegetables. Your green drink that uh, that Danielle was drinking <laughs> yeah. before we started with your your spirulina. It's blurring it out as though it's the, it's the have, quinoa. This was the quinoa of uh, of Star Wars. Yeah, and it was mm -hmm. just so invigorating and fulfilling after after just eating a well, lot junk food, but just like you know, we've been missing a few uh, paints on the palette here in Star Wars. And man, I thought this was great. What'd you guys think? Yeah, I love this. Like it. it um... And again, I do. I like a lot of the Star Wars. I like the silly stuff. I feel like uh, folks who've been watching this in JLU, uh, JSU, I don't remember the name of the show we used to do. Um, but I feel <laughs> like people who have been like watching me talk about this for a while, I one of the things I've always said about Star Wars is that like, please get us off of Tatooine. Please, I would like to see something where there are no Skywalkers and there are no Jedis. I want to see like how the actual world that doesn't involve this stuff works because so far all we've seen are like you know uh uh people who are rebels and then the people they save who we see very briefly on planets and then we see you know everybody who works for like the evil folks this time we get to see a cubicle and it's like hey like i this is how the middle class in a galaxy there's far, jobs, far away lives. yeah there are jobs yeah. other than the Jedi and bounty hunter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. People do hey, other things. Smuggler. Okay. Smuggler. Yes, yes. Watch smuggler. yourself. <laughs> and and various kinds of royalty. But yeah. yeah, so it was interesting to get to see like this part of uh of the Star Wars universe because it is so expansive. And not only that, but also uh it feels like and not to talk badly about other shows, I've enjoyed a lot of them, but this feels more of like prestige TV type stuff. Well, yeah, it is prestige. It, it is, if anything's prestige TV, this is because you have uh, the guy who made Michael Clayton. Uh, you yeah. have you have the person, uh, Bo, who created, uh, what's it called? House, House of, of Cards. Cards. And then yeah. the um, uh, the other person is like the Americans showrunner, a big big uh, big wig on the Americans. That's as that's as prestige a TV gang as you're gonna yeah. a, a posse as you're gonna form. Yeah, I think that the big to me like obviously it's great to everything you guys are saying. It's like bring in you know these sort of different voices, go to different planets, look at different sort of layers of the Star Wars universe we haven't seen before. But I think maybe the biggest shift is it's not even the content; it's the tone and the approach and. And mm -hmm. so every other Star Wars show, and I get why you would do this. Like I get why Favreau and Filoni are like, we got to recapture that seventies George Lucas. Like Star Wars is a is a story, but it's a vibe. It's like it's kind of it's retro. Right. It's like an adventure story. It's a little campy stuff for kids. You know, like we all get when you say Star Wars, we're not just picturing a universe, but we're picturing a a sensibility. And I think this is the very first time that somebody has been like, I'm not going to try to recapture that sensibility at all. I'm going to leave that over here. It still exists. Yeah. You could watch Boba Fett and Mandalorian and recapture that. Bad Batch is going to come out. It's going to have that mm -hmm. vibe. But we're yeah. going to do something over here and it's straight up conspiracy, thriller, spy show. Like it's just doing what it's doing in the Star Wars universe. And that's, it's so refreshing. It's so different. It was really exciting yeah. to see. And it, it is yeah, different there's like to dead me. bodies. 
Oh, yeah, there's many dead bodies. There are yeah. dead bodies. There, there's like dead bodies. It opens in a brothel, like you know, the same show Mama Star Wars. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's a little twisted around here. Um, but it's, it's just like, <laughs> like a mean, twisted had, brand of the weekend. Even just like we we've had so many shows that do world building around the rebellion. These are early rebels. These were some of the early rebel groups and leaders, and you know, here's how they interacted. But we've never. And there's a reason. I'm not trying to say like Tony Gilroy is the only good person who's ever written Star Wars, but the older shows, it's always about like, well, this has got to lead into a chase or an action scene or a comedy beat or like we got to get we got to leave this planet and get to the next place to do the next bit. And this is the first time where it's really felt like we could just do a whole episode that is like, well, how did the Empire plan to spread out and take over all of these different systems across the whole galaxy or like how did the rebels fund some yeah. of their missions? And like mm. to take that kind of in-depth piecemeal look at it and really break it down and, and think about practicality is totally different for Star yeah. Wars, I think. And I, I just wanted to say before we go into the trailer that what I loved about it is that the difference isn't, even though I really like The Last Jedi, it's not like a spit in the face, everything you think you know about Star Wars is wrong, psych mm. kind of different. It just adds depth. It just creates, it takes a 2D story and makes it three-dimensional or 2D yeah. characters and makes them three-dimensional and just gives you more granularity uh, in like a way that's still compelling. And I thought, I know the one critique people love the show is it's boring. I thought this moved along very well and was never, not never dull, but never lagged in a way where I was like, when are they going to get to the fireworks factory? There was always, they still had great set pieces along the way uh, as we will talk about. So yeah. let's dive into the honest trailer for Andor. We'll say more nice things as it plays. You love The Mandalorian. You like, like most of Kenobi and Boba Fett exists. I owe you a nice long soak in the back to tank when this is done. Now, Disney's got a new Star Wars streaming show that fans never asked for. In this prequel of a prequel about the third lead in Rogue One, and it's the best thing they've ever made? This show does not f around. And or. So pause. Uh. What a shame uh, that this show came out in the release order that it did, because I really think that people bailed on Disney plus Star Wars for, you know, perfectly valid reasons. And they would have loved this show had it come out. Don't you think? I don't I don't know. I mean, it's really hard to say. I feel like this is one that people are going to go back and discover, both because it got buzzed and just because I think a lot of people didn't bother to check it out right away. Like, I, I don't think you can. I think Disney was right in the strategy of like, make a show about Boba Fett, make a show about Obi-Wan Kenobi. These are signature characters everybody loves and is gonna wanna see. And it, it, it's, yeah. there's a natural curiosity. Uh, and I think that you don't get that with Andor. So they're, they're just, a lot of people were probably like, I don't even remember who that guy was. I'll get to that eventually. So I, I, I think it, we're gonna maybe have to give this one six months for everybody yeah. to go back and discover it. Maybe. I, I also think it has a title problem because the show is about, Cassian Endor's journey from, you know, a kind of small, small potatoes thief to, to rebellion leader. But it's about so much more than that. So like, mm -hmm. if they had called it the rebellion or Star Wars. They've just got rebels already. Yeah, I feel like if right. they didn't have, if they hadn't used rebels already, rebels. that would have been Rebels perfect. would have been perfect. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Andor, it's like, is that the moon that the Ewoks live on? Like, I, I can't remember who, who was yeah. that guy. It's like kind of a kind of a put off from the start, but man, Moth Manma begins. Yeah, I, I also think I mean, and this isn't a knock on the character of Diego Luna. I think Diego Luna is really good in the show, but I, I do think he's he's sort of by design. He's kind of the pivot point. He's not. It's not necessarily like the show is all about Cassie and Andor. He's like at the center of the story, and everybody kind of revolves around him. But I, in some ways, it's just as much about this other stuff that's going on as it is about Cassie and Andor, the guy and his particular journey. Yeah. Like, I think by uh, the end, Luthen almost feels like as much a protagonist of this show as yeah, Cassie. Yeah, it's a big, even it's a big on, too. Like it's a big ensemble, three, yeah. Those three are kind of our tri-leads. You know? Yeah, and our Empire friends, which we'll get to. So let's keep going. <laughs> Experience a galaxy that looks different from the one we're used to because it wasn't shot in the giant egg where Disney makes everything else in the first Star Wars streaming show, free from cheap nostalgia. 
Merchandising bait, Jedi, Sith, lightsabers, Skywalkers, The Force, Tatooine, or comedy. Honestly, it's hard to believe it's in the same universe as all the other crap. Those of you who still believe that when we enter this building, we are in a temple. Give immediately emergency <laughs> powers to the Supreme Chancellor. <laughs> it's so awesome. <laughs> I, I, do, do you think it's possible Jar Jar is still in the Senate? When, when, when that occurred to be like, oh, old man Jar Jar made, like he was There's a like senator. A, it's like a nine, 16 year difference, 19 yeah. year difference. Something. I'm trying to like picture him out there listening to Mon Mothma, you know, like still participating after all this time. It Just, is kind of hard to picture it as the same universe. Ooh, she's a have a big point. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's he definitely a be like separatist. Got to join. Turn off the <laughs> little voting lamp. Um, yeah, yeah. I, God, I wonder. I mean, we can get into this later because it's. I feel like season two is going to just. I think it'll still be good, but they're going to have to make more concessions to establish Star Wars lore and start yeah. working in more of what we know because. He said he's set out his his like goalpost is like the final scene of Andor season two is going to lead directly into the first scene of Rogue One. Like he's going to stroll out of Andor and into Rogue One. So we have to get into the more new hopish. We have to get into the Star Wars world proper. I think it's coming. Ah, Jar Jar's coming, so. baby. <laughs> I don't I don't really think I, I think he can. I think there are. There are elements he can cherry pick. Like, I think, will we get, you know, a Jimmy Smith's appearance in season two? Oh, all, all signs point to yes. But yeah. uh, any, I mean, I would even say, like, maybe you would do something like, is the Rogue One cartoon Peter Cushing going to make a, going to pop up? Uh, you know, may, yeah. I wouldn't rule it out entirely or whatever. KT, KTSO, is that the droid? K2, it, well, definitely K2SO. I think we'll have yeah, to yeah. do Cassian sort of meeting him and, and, you know, re reprogramming him or whatever. That's definitely going to come up. But I don't think you have to go full on like back to Tatooine and we're doing Star Wars kind of campy joke stuff again. Like, I, I think he's going to keep the tone consistent for both seasons. We'll see. And I, I yeah, I, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, Tony's not coming back for season two. I mean, he helped write it, but he's not directing. Yeah. Well, we'll see what the tone. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it was, it was consistent season one, even when Tony wasn't directing yeah. the episode. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I would be interested to see like what those characters look like in this world, because like you know, taking some of the characters that have already been established and putting them in this like immediately like enriched them and gave them more life. And so if they're able to pull that magic trick again, where it's like almost like backwards, you know, uh, working backwards from here's what we know about this person. What can we do to make this more like? involved and interesting and yeah, and yeah. give them more you know more to do and more of a backstory you know bring jimmy smith's in and, and give him like an arc yeah. like that where we can really see that stuff i yeah. i would be completely interested you're right they, they have earned the faith after this uh season that like they could handle a jedi character in an interesting way rather mm -hmm. than just like somebody just bored boredly deflecting lightsaber bolts be like go this yeah. way to i don't think right i don't think we're gonna get another like robot terminator troopers that luke's gotta wipe out single-handed like I, that's just not andor's vibe you know like i feel like they'll figure out a way to like meet in the middle yeah i mean if they what the the, the greatest magic trick they pulled was they they made even just a stormtrooper with a blaster like scary and like had weight to it. And you felt like, oh, that person could kill me just because they feel like it at any point. So to be able to invest like what you want to feel when you see a Jedi or when you see yeah. one of these heroes emerge and stuff like that, I think that you're right, maybe they could do it. Um, yeah, I think, I think so. Yeah, all right, let's keep going. Diego Luna is back as Cassian Andor, a human born on planet Orphan, but who grew up on Ferrix, a working class town with a strong commitment to the percussive arts. <laughs> when Cassian kills two Plus, cops outside of you're a- gonna, You're gonna call it Planet Stomp? I remember that. Yeah, Planet it. Stomp. <laughs> what, what was your initial one, Lon? Oh, Planet Contractor was Planet mine. Contractor. Because I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. what I like so much is Almost always, we're so used to Star Wars planets being defined by like the biome, like the ecosystem, like it's a forest, it's an ocean, it's a desert. This is the first time where it was like, 
no, no, it's brick. Like it's it's a it's, <laughs> it's material base. Like it's yeah. a this is a brick town full of stonemasons, and everybody is a contractor. Yeah, like that rule. I yeah. that barracks was yeah. so cool. I loved Anvil guy. I love the look of the whole town. It's a really cool setting. It, it was a great setting. And then uh, in addition to the, uh, you know, the workforce contractors, you also had basically the imperial contractors. I had no mm -hmm. idea about that, uh, that like not corporate arm of the empire, but like adjacent corporate right. thing. What I forget yeah. what they're called, but that they also had their own systems and stuff like that. And they that's, worked, they cooperated saying, with like, the empire. The so Very much like thought that went into all that stuff is incredible. I'm sorry. Yeah. It makes it feel yeah, like no. a real world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead, Danielle. No, no, it just, it, it, it reminded me very much of like any of those, uh, you know, like any military contractors and how like, you know, Blackwater or any of those, like they have like their mm -hmm. own dudes. Like that yeah. was really what that kind of like- But these seem like the, the more bumbling. These were like the like the Amazon factory security yeah. guards. <laughs> yeah, these are rent-a-cop, son, yeah. yeah. And the um, empire was the ones of, it, you were in serious trouble if the empire showed up, but these were just kind of like the- the people at the iPhone factory that uh, <laughs> you know, keep you inside. Um, you took my brothel, girl. You're too short. Oh no, I'm yeah. bad. <laughs> but it's the same thing. We're doing it both on the we do it on the Empire side, and then we also do it on the Rebellion. Like Saw Guerrero's got that incredible speech where he lists off like the 20 different factions that are all uniting to become the Rebellion, and like they just really like a lot of it is sort of pulled from real historical revolutions. Like there's a bit I want to talk about it a little bit there, but. Uh, I, I the, the, just that that level of thought and care to the fictional Star Wars rebellion was blew yeah. my mind. It was awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right, keep going. Brothel. Oh no. Embark on his epic journey to be anywhere other than where he is at any moment. I just need enough to get out of here. I can't be here. We need to go tomorrow. We're getting out of here. We're leaving. I need to relocate for a while. We gotta get out of here. I'm done. <laughs> Come on, Cass. Get your whole life ahead of you. Sit down for once and enjoy a beautiful sunrise with a loved one. Oh, right. Join the fight. Yeah, pause. Take pause. Uh, the one thing I hope they don't pick up on is the search for Cassian's sister, unless they have something great planned. I, they they seem to abandon it in season one, uh, and I hope that's not the major propelling thing. Yeah, it doesn't two. come up for like six episodes, and then his mom is like, stop looking for your sister. And I think everybody watching is like, oh, right. Oh, sister. yeah. Oh, that was the inciting incident of this <laughs> yeah, entire right. television That show. is a thing. You're right. That was a thing. <laughs> so it's fine. Let it remain a mystery. And or season two can be her, you know, same last name. Um, or not. I don't know. I guess probably not because she's he's adopted by Jin Urso. No, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. All right. Very going. Star Wars though. <laughs> yeah. Join the fight to take down the Empire with the Rebellion's Goth Space Uncle. I made my mind a sunless space. Stellan Skarsgård shines in his dual role as a leader willing to sacrifice anything and anyone, and a sassy antiques dealer who lets his hands do the talking. A gift for your husband. I have some new things coming in soon. Mm -hmm. This became Steve Bonnet. <laughs> Funding his operation is Mon Mothma, a galactic senator with a relatable problem. She spent way too much money on Star Wars. How much is missing? 400,000. Deepen your understanding of this original trilogy briefings giver as a key figure who bankrolled the rebels at the sacrifice of her family. But like, no big loss there. That's just so heartful. Go yeah, deep. Pause. I just couldn't stop imagining her husband as a uh, MacGruber in space, <laughs> like, <laughs> like got, some kind of Will Forte character, Will Forte, yeah. <laughs> just like shitty, shitty galactic uh, house husband or whatever he was. Yeah. Anyway, I think this is where like the House of Cards uh, guy probably shined is um, is the Mon Mothma stuff, which mm -hmm. was in high danger of being incredibly boring <laughs> and dry yeah. um, and tropey. But I think like it felt like a real political show with its own politics and its own like mingling of the political and the personal that you just don't see it in genre fiction as much as you'd like to uh, because they're too worried that if somebody doesn't pull out a gun it's going to be boring but I thought that stuff was riveting too it's 180 I don't mean to keep harping on the other shows I like a lot <laughs> of the other shows but it's so 180 from Bo we just had Boba Fett and their version of like a crime drama was like we gotta steal because there's no job well, now you work for me. Okay. And it was like, no more. It was like that <laughs> level of thought put into like, what are they stealing? And what is the nature of crime here? And how does this ecosystem work? And then this show is like, 
we're going to spend a whole episode digging into like where the money came from and who she's going to have to deal with to get the money back. And then this guy can help with it. And then and it's like, what, what's the time frame? And, you know, it's like so layered and dense. It's like, it, it's, it's totally. And like these people from different planets have different cultures. Like their culture around marriage is different from, you know, a typical love one, even though she's sympathetic to that. She's like, well, I guess this is just kind of the way we do th- it was it was brilliant it's really not yeah and like an excuse even to talk about like like there's a little social commentary in there where mon mothma had this sort of more progressive view of moving kind of beyond the chandrillin cultural stuff but now her daughter is sort of going more conservative and embracing it which is like you know a real thing that happens in families and it's just to see star wars sort of reflecting that in this realistic lived in way yeah remarkable. especially when she has to completely hide that part of herself from her family like that's that's mm-hmm. what she gives yeah. up for the rebellion uh, and then i mean we didn't even stop to mention it but uh luthan like just the best <laughs> star wars character uh since so good. ever i don't know i it's it's hard for me to he's in the upper echelon for me of, of best characters that uh that exist in this universe so yeah. uh just stellar man. skateboard just killing stellar, it. stellar skateboard. <laughs> that, that <laughs> monologue he, I, one of the year's best monologues by the way yeah. with lonnie the guy by the way what a delight to have a guy with my name in a show never happened. <laughs> lonnie's, never. Uh, lonnie's are having a huge uh not a calendar year. year but like 12 months between red there's yeah. a lonnie and red rocket and now in star mm, wars yeah I mean, uh, well. lonnie and star wars unbelievable <laughs> but yeah like that guy's in the elevator and he has that that's it's where we pulled the i made my mind a sunless face yeah, it's incredible writing. Skarsgård, at, like it would be like an Oscar clip if that was in a movie. Like that is that is top. That is S tier acting right there, folks. Yeah, giving it a hundred percent. Yeah, so good. Um, it's bleak. And there was, I also there was like, didn't. This didn't make it into the final script, but I I was pretty pleased. Like he completes the uh, the Sand franchise, the Sand trilogy. Clown. Yes. yes. He's yeah, got we call a, him Be- Baron Stark Conan, but he's, yeah, because like he's got the the pirates, the pirates, maybe, is yeah, Sandy. Dune. That's Sandy. Dune's very pirates, sandy. very sandy on the pirate, beach. It's constantly. a little wet. It's also a little wet. <laughs> Dune, the sandiest of all the major franchises, and Up then too. you know what could be more sandy than Star Wars? Uh, when it's not on Tatooine, though, you know, it's uh, mm. it's refreshing. Um, yeah. All right. Let's we got it. a beach planet in this. <laughs> like super deep into the inner workings of the Empire with Cyril Karn, a mall cop who accidentally kicks off the rebellion while his boss is away at a conference. I was a good deputy inspector. He's a domineering little dweeb with mommy issues. You've been in my private box. I have ways of knowing. Tricks of her kids, Mom. Cringe as his Oedipus complex locks on to Dedra Miro, a high-ranking intelligence officer with a mean case of mean face. But that's not how you pictured Jennifer's voice, huh? In a show with such a deep fascination in the banality of evil and the complex inner workings of bureaucracies, you'll swear it was mainly intended for adults. Have you saw New Hope in theaters? You're 50. It's time. Thrill of the show. I don't think that Star Wars could uh, exist just for adults obviously um but i hope that they carve off a little slice for us <laughs> I, hope, I hope that they have like a little star wars uh star wars after dark thing going <laughs> at all times like this that can hope that can maybe influence or, or deepen the understanding of the other stuff what they should really do is like a history channel style star wars like a documentary about oh the, get, the let wars. ken burns let ken the burns ul- yeah. ultimate star dad star wars content just world <laughs> war ii shows but about yeah. star wars just talking heads of uh yeah you know, veterans of the battle of yavin oh man if i got herzog get him on it yeah go nuts for that yeah yeah um but yeah the empire the imperial people i mean this was uh it both made the empire uh more scary but also more human i guess that it seems like they are kind of uh, you got their hubris uh, and you also got their frailty um in, in equal measure because of these deeply flawed people and just so many bad bosses you know every yeah. and, and so many great <laughs> imperial bad boss moments um, of people just chewing each other out in public and sniping at each other and and like how that kind of breeds the, the insecurities and the weaknesses like in the cracks you can kind of you can kind of disrupt stuff because everybody's on edge and everyone's just looking out for their own ass it was great uh it, it was really really good and um i uh, look I, people get uh, i think a little too um uh judgmental about uh, and like uh thinking that um depicting something is also endorsing it but i want those mm-hmm. two to hook up big time i think that yeah. they need to get into like a serious 
BDSM uh, subdom relationship. And I think that's where it's headed. When she says, uh, I'm going to put you in a little cage or something. And, and he's like, he's like, mm. uh, I think that's where season two is going. He clearly already likes to lick boots. So like, let's oh, just get is, it going. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I think that there was some sex in this show, like uh, Cassian. I mean, he's got a body count. Uh, he <laughs> yeah, made, no, Kat, like, I, I like that they they worked in like he's a ladies' man. Like it was in, like in a subtle way, but but they they made sure you got it. Like, there were like yeah. four or five references to like, you know, like good, good, yeah, good, we good, hooked good. up. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah, his mom at one point is like, okay, which of the fifty women on this right? Yeah, she's you got that line. Tell yeah. your secret to. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I think in a uh, a lesser show would have made that more more on the nose and more like uh, like cheesy and don't leave without your without your cup of coffee and your ham and eggs and like right. leave me satisfied unsatisfied. Uh, but <laughs> but you can just you can just open your eyes and, and learn things about the characters. So uh, good times. Let's keep going. Real at a show that puts characters first, but still propelled by multi-episode plot arcs, like a heist that sets Cassian up as more young Stalin than young Solo. Cassian's right, hometown. This is the thing I wanted to talk about. I, uh, we've been talking a lot. I don't have to, I don't want to overlabor the point, but the, the, the level of detail and thought to like how the sort of revolution and rebellion came together, that's real. Like there, Stalin really pulled off an early robbery that helped to fund the Bolshevik revolution that, that they sort of was inspired the heist in Andor, which is so cool to think about yeah. going back into real history and try to find these moments. I, I mentioned on a, I mentioned on another recap show, like there, there's that scene as well where Cassian's stepfather gets uh, killed during this sort of clash on the street between the protesters and Ferrex and the stormtroopers. That was sort of, I think, physically modeled on the Boston Massacre as well that sort of helped to mm. inspire the American Revolution. So yeah. just he's really drawing from real histor history and, and, and observations to sort of put this Yeah, together. and he's kind of finding the, the commonalities between all revolts right. and revolutions against uh, oppressive regimes it's not like well andor is joe is joe biden and mira is donald <laughs> trump <laughs> yeah. like it's yeah. smarter than that or it's more timeless than that uh, right it, it's, um, it's 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 taking oh you know all of these broad themes it's not like this is a remake of this incident in yeah. space it's like yeah. yeah good stuff uh read right. history folks it's boring but it's good uh it's all right keep boring. going it's boring. cassian's hometown being slowly ground down under the empire's boot until the little dick droid that could tips the scales <laughs> oh now it's on <laughs> <laughs> and a three episode prison break sequence starring andy circus that is so f good he needs to hang up the mocap suit immediately this man has earned the right to use his own human face forever just the best. Yeah. <laughs> Pause. I, I, I thought think that... that that guy becomes Supreme Chancellor Snow. Oh, who amazing. Is... <laughs> amazing. I hope we get a show about that journey. Ugh. Yeah. I, so I, I many don't have, jars. I don't have anything to add to what we said, but it's just, I think that that was, that was the best episode of television I saw this year was the one that starts with, um, Miro uh interrogating Bix in like a very oh. horrifying way and like the build up to like uh, I was listening to it with headphones I was like oh my god they're gonna play a sound I believed that they were going to torture me through my headphones <laughs> <laughs> so I was like okay I'm ready to take these off right now <laughs> but uh and then culminating in in that prison break um just just great tv just great tv Got nothing and the, the restraint to not to not show us the aftermath. We get that moment where he's, he can't swim and, and Cassie gets knocked off Push the platform off, yeah. and we, 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 the show sort of the story moves on and they just like no franchise in 2022 <laughs> has the brass uh, balls to just be like, we're not going to go back and show you that he's okay or what happened or like tease like, oh, we'll bring him back in season two, you know, like there's yeah. nothing it's just like, maybe he died. We don't know. We're never going to find out. And, and I uh, think they, they've lost sight of the fact that like, that's what created Star Wars fans in the first place was right. these kind of background or smaller moments mm. or or side mentions of oh, the Clone Wars or whatever. And then fans would fill in the blanks themselves and go and try to research and get obsessed and do fan fiction and like really invest themselves in filling in those blanks exactly. rather than having a series 
or whatever show you every single thing that happened to every single character um yeah like it's just way. like the restraint and the the patience to not do that even though they know that it would mean so much to us because he's such a great character yeah. and it was such an iconic moment uh, is, yeah. is brilliant yeah uh all right let's keep going forget all your expectations about star wars and disney plus and prepare to learn what the rebellion against the empire actually demanded of its believers their freedom their souls their very lives and $7.99 a month until Disney actually makes season two. You better leave the show alone, Disney. There's only one forced corporate crossover we'll accept. One. Yaba. I, I've always wanted to touch him. I, like the texture of Yaba is something I, I need to discover. <laughs> then I'm obsessed with the texture of Yaba. I'm very curious to actually <laughs> touch that texture. Okay. I've been dreaming with Yaba for <laughs> skin. It's just something that obsesses me. Touching his, you know, like his <laughs> belly. <laughs> like, oh, I'm not in love with Yaba. That was one big mistake I made. Do but you, I, is, is I have like in... seven Yabas at home. Story. <laughs> oh, yeah, pause. That last one is the most recent one where he was doing press for Andor and they asked him like, are you so, why are you so obsessed with Jabba the Hutt? And he tried to deny it. Yeah. Sir, we, like, yeah. sir, we have receipts. We have yes, receipts. You're, you're clearly on the record here. It's being <laughs> and it's, there's something so soothing too about the way he says Yabba. Like yeah. I can't, it's not just the JY Spanish inflection. Ryan, it's there's something. Ryan wrote there's in the chat, reason. I could fall asleep to him saying Java like it's yeah. Russian sounds. It's also like, <laughs> I like he's like, I want to poke it. It's like, do you think that Java's like the Pillsbury Doughboy? Like you just pick it's it, slimy? you poke him, he's like, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, I think he's like one of those like, squishable, like, things that kind of like i don't know I, yeah I'm i feel like i don't know but i feel like the real the real puppet or whatever they were using probably more rigid than we yeah. than, than the visuals would suggest yeah. otherwise it would just collapse it right just like i feel like it have to yeah. be mostly holding itself up in place you know but i would love it uh for ryan at least if somebody could make an asmr diego luna saying yaba remix <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's talk to his people, Ryan. Let's see if we can get Diego in, in studio. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's finish up. Stan Diego, Baron Starkinen. The moon. <laughs> Don't trust the ISB in Division 23. He's back, guys. Oh, there. that's good. Drop that zero <laughs> and get captured by Miro. Beehive, rise up. Going forward, to build a Breakthrough Empire 2.0 and succeed in an increasingly competitive world, we will need to be extremely hardcore. Caesar, the means of production. Teams. From the nook of Saw. And Cousin! Empire That's the Rangers. other, uh, my other favorite TV show of the year. Yeah, yeah. watch the bear. Watch yeah. It. Everything you need here is on the wall. Water, nightlight. And food. You can get as much as you want. Top table wins flavor. Wait, water <laughs> and food tubes right next to my bed? And sometimes a food tube has flavor? That's downright luxurious by my standards. <laughs> oh, this is genius. Yeah. How much yeah. do I want one of those, like, right, right there? Oh, that's if I had a food tube amazing, right now. Amazing, right? Never and sometimes there's flavor? Flavor? <laughs> like, do a good job? Oh, that thing is so the size bad. of a New York apartment. Like, that's doing mm -hmm. pretty well. Yeah. And I mean, that that prison section of just, like, the 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 gamification of work and like how evil that could be uh, that could become and, and like just the ultimate like not a panopticon but like a way where everybody keeps themselves in line just by turning the electricity on on the floor uh twice a day it's, it is it, kind of that panopticon though because like everybody's watching everybody else and like you kind of you're enlisting like the fellow inmates to sort of like guard one another like yeah it does, it and does they're have, making them compete against each other to right uh, it does uh, have that kind know. of idea baked in a little yeah bit. uh great stuff great stuff folks um i uh think we have some outtakes but before we play them uh like and subscribe and hit the bell uh we don't always say uh such effusive praise about everything we do on this show but that's how you know it means something uh, you've earned yeah. it, Andor. Um, I feel like tune in next week to get a a, a different take, more of a mixed bag. Yeah, <laughs> although I don't know. We there's there's worse. Movies. I I liked it. Uh, yeah, it, it's fun. it's a little goofy. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's see some deleted scenes. If we have starring lunatics, sometimes traveling alone, but other times traveling with others, and or Cass Effect, Kind of Change, yeah. <laughs> Axis of Weasel, Pawn Stars. Mamma Mia, Scar Wars, I am the Senate, 
The Mothma Prophecies. Marva's The Avengers. Killing Thieve. Disney Princess Fiona. Proud Girls. Ilsa, She Wolf <laughs> of the SS. It's a real movie. Miro yep. Mortals. Turning Dead. Maul Blart. Rent a Copaganda. Cyril the Viral. Assistant to the Regional Supervisor. Dwight Shoot. Scream Queen. <laughs> Morbius. Why was I programmed to feel? Red <laughs> Rocket, Red Rocket. What you talking about, Willis? ISB movie. Circus Ringleader. The Outer Swim. Forest Chomp. The Dying Game. You don't have Cave to make graphics for all The Rael World. Yeah. Ferrix. <laughs> right? Rogue Zero. A People's History of the Galaxy. Anything else? No? Yeah, I'm Either throwing way. stuff at the wall a lot of the time. You oh, yeah, pick yeah. Out your two favorites. We had to, uh, uh, hope he was on vacation, so I just sent him a ton, and uh, 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 so he we had enough to choose from ahead of time. Uh, there you go. Um, he's back, though, so we have we only have one choice for next week. <laughs> um, <laughs> you'll see. Uh, all right, uh, some questions. Um, Sandman asks, uh, when would it be appropriate for you to do an honest trailer for honest trailers? I think we've done it twice. <laughs> one was uh, with Ryan Reynolds. And yeah, we other... had Deadpool do it. Yeah, right? and once we had Deadpool do it, I think it's the Deadpool 2 honest trailer. And then yeah. the other time when when that was a thing, we did the artificial intelligence rights. We we fed an AI every honest trailer oh, right. scripted and they uh, and they spit one back out. So so go check those out if you missed them. Um, Evan J. Pretzer, I have to go off to a murder scene soon. Hopefully. Um, okay. Oh, in his in his function as a reporter. Oh, okay, got it. <laughs> but is Andor assigned Disney? That's the perfect cover. Is Andor assigned Disney should move into more prestige level content for its franchises on Hulu? I would not mind. I would not mind either, as we said, but I don't think anything's going to Hulu with a Star Wars name. Hulu is going away within five years, mark my words. It's just going to be a tab on Disney Plus, right? Right. Well, I mean, that that is like it like it is internationally well no internationally right they have star which yeah. is sort of the version of hulu and that's where the adult shows go but you can get to it through disney plus so i think it'll be something like that where they're not branded together but it'll be one i mean you can already bundle them but it'll be a one subscription to be like go here for the groans and go here for the for the young people yeah, yeah. and then here for espn or whatever right yeah that'll be in there too um but yeah if they use <coughs> excuse me uh star wars totally. is just a uh, I was sick last week. Uh, as a uh, template for just telling like grown up genre fiction stories, there's a million different ways you can spin Star Wars and a million expanded yeah. universe characters or new ones that you can create. Actually, and I, like I said, I hope that they just do like one for us, three for kids, or yeah. three for everyone, and I one mean, for like, grown ups. They're being they're they're being pretty smart and experimental mm -hmm. about this stuff. Just sort of generally, I mean, we're going to have a more adult Daredevil series yes. coming up from mm -hmm. the Marvel sort of wing of things. And even Disney Animation did that Chip and Dale Lonely Island movie that was like not inappropriate for young people, but definitely aimed more at your 20 to 30 somethings than the children. And yeah. uh, I think, you know, so I feel like they are doing a pretty interesting job of like occasionally layering and stuff for the older people they know are watching Disney Plus. Yep. Um, all right, moving on. Daisu Saikoro says, are there any other shows, movies, or cartoons in other light franchises do you think have that adult and or feel? Oh, Lon, you're gonna you're gonna laugh at me. Uh I, but I genuinely mean it. Logan. I think Logan springs to mind as no, a I, adult listen, uh, I, as an I adult agree. take on a on a superhero yeah. film. <laughs> I didn't hate Logan. I just it, the, the, the rhetoric around it got a little outsized uh, over time. That was more what we were parodying. But I like I don't think it's is a Andor terrible Logan movie. is a is uh, what right yeah it, it Andor is, Logan. <laughs> it's definitely that kind of idea of like how would we how would we re think about this in a more, you know, sort of like mature setting. Will they release a cut of Andor in black and white? And call it the, <laughs> the, black chrome black edition. Black chrome edition the blood and chrome edition of Andor. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think uh, that like for cartoons, maybe uh, Mask of the Phantasm is pretty close ooh, to something for, like that. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, yeah. even like the Batman was kind of like, mm, yeah. like mm -hmm. let's totally. do a longer, more sort of thoughtful, take on this material adult in a different way it kind of more in the deadpool way but you know not to compare but the harley quinn show you know yes. the harley quinn animated show is just like a good animated sitcom that's also in the dc universe right, and, and yeah. uses the like is not afraid of the it's not like making fun of the comic book stuff all the time like 
it is very much in the universe and using what it has at its disposal to parody at the same time. So oh, yeah, yeah. That's a good yeah. example. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Darth Rella, more of a comment to the question. This had the best Star Wars dialogue. I like the films, but the older you get, some of the writing in the films is horrible. And I agree. I think that um, there's a lot to love about Star Wars from uh, throughout its history, production design. Even characters can be great, and yet dialogue can suck. And this just had the best monologues and spe <laughs> speechifying. Um, yeah. there, there's like, I can't think of a show, much less a Star Wars show, where I have like a top five speeches. <laughs> like that, that mm, yeah. rarely I walk mean, away from something with that. To be fair, like part of that is intentional. Like the original Star Wars was written to be throwback and hokey and like an old school adventure serial. So it would have sort of whiz bang, gee whiz kind of dialogue more so than like Andor, which is really trying to be like more of a grounded, realistic show. So I think yeah. some of that is is purposeful, but I agree. There's never been anything in Star Wars that had this level of precision and, and care mm. in the writing yeah. before. And performance wise, there's also been great Star Wars performances, but I think that like top to bottom, great acting. Um, Except for the holiday special. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The yeah. Arthur could... is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, okay, Arthur Mingo, if there were a show like Andor that focused just on the Empire, I might be really into it. He, he also said earlier that he was finding it hard to get into Andor. I thought you had plenty of Empire stuff. Keep watching. Um, they don't really... I don't think uh, Dendro Miro really like kicks into gear until like the fourth or fifth episode and you get more of the ISB stuff, mm -hmm. but that was some of my favorite. And they were just talking about like inter-office procedures for jurisdiction and stuff like yeah. that. And I still thought <laughs> it was really good. Um, so yeah, I, if you if you bailed on the show early, uh, keep uh, check back in. I thought that, yeah, the slowest part is probably the first three episodes um, just to get things, uh, get things moving. And establish and stuff, yeah. 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 Um, um, but Tim, yes, with Tony Gilroy not knowing jack shit about Star Wars, uh, how do shows like The Witcher, W O T and R O P, I guess, some, Wheel of Time, Wheel of Time, and, and Rings of, of Power, Power, keep getting showrunners who actively hate the IP? Hey, sometimes that's not it true. Works. Rings of Power. Those two guys are like lifelong Tolkien obsessive. So yeah. I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to correct you right off the bat. They're big time book fans. That's how they yeah. got that gig. Well, Tony Gilroy. Uh, Sometimes it works. <laughs> I think I think sometimes obviously somebody in that room or on the set knows a lot about Star Wars because yeah. there are a shit ton of Easter eggs and stuff like that layered in there. But he's approaching it like, okay, who are these people? Who are these characters? And you don't need to have read every expanded universe thing because they're new. They, he created yeah. them. And I think that it is, I think it can be useful to have someone who obviously cares about the show that they're making, but doesn't mythologize everything. And I think that that's probably part of why we're getting something that does feel more human and more grounded because like he doesn't have this as his like mythos where it's like, oh my God, now I get to write the Millennial Falcon. It's like, no, I'm like really focused on telling like this story. Yeah. And I, mean, and like, I like, that's, I, no, mm -hmm. go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. And I liked like The Witcher. I know that there's like, you know, the thing about Henry Cavill, like probably isn't super happy because there were a lot of changes. I liked The Witcher season one. Season two was like, eh. um, but it worked enough that they kept them coming back. So, you know. Yeah. I, 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 a lot of shows used to, there was always the idea would be you'd have a lore guy or a lore person where mm -hmm. you'd have like the writer's room and, and people have differing levels of knowledge about the history of the backstory of whatever. But then you'd always be sure there was like Brian Cogman in, in Game of Thrones. This was his job was he's just like a book reader obsessive about George R. R. Martin's world. And he was the guy that could be like, hey, what? Who was the dragon that this guy yeah. would have blown and yeah. you just know it? And like Star Trek, that's always how Star Trek worked too. Like you could have 10 people in the room who have varying levels of knowledge about the show and the films, but you'd have one person there who could just be like, oh no, that's the Enterprise D, the the yeah. you know, warp drive is yeah. located here. You know? Yeah. And all I can say about fidelity to source material or familiarity is like sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I think in this case, Tony Gilroy did an amazing job, but I think that for me personally, I would prefer. Uh, a, a Witcher show that embraced its cheesy, not cheesiness, but its campiness and its over the top uh, 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 approach to the to the material. And if you just made a cool uh, hack and slash fantasy show with Henry Cavill, I think that's the direction I'd prefer that one to go. Whereas Star Wars, when we have so much of this other stuff, I'd prefer it to go in this direction. So you got to kind of take each one as it comes. Uh, we'll end with this. 
Uh, similar, similar show. Adam Halpert says, uh, since uh, similar question, since Tony admitted he's not a Star Wars fan and insisted on avoiding fan service, should Martin Scorsese be convinced? I'm going to say forced to make a Marvel show. And I say, yes, yes, he should. Force, <laughs> I think we should we should Shanghai uh, directors who are unwilling to uh, uh, play and to uh, make Disney uh, theme park rides and, and force them to do it just to see what happens. Scorsese uh, Squirrel Girl. Scorsese. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I know that's a jokey question, but I, I again, just circling back to the point is I think that um, you don't need to be a fan to make a great show in the universe. And I, I think the show is, pr is proof of it. Um, although I do think that there was fan service in here. I'm just not enough of a fan to notice, but I watched like Easter egg videos. I'm like, holy crap, that, that. Yeah, there were, there yeah, were every single sort of like shout outs to people yeah. who, who really go deep on the lore. I mean, look, I think, I, I think people on, on some level, I think a lot of this is, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit gatekeepy. It's like this has to play to fans. It has to have stuff that I know that celebrates me for knowing all the lore and spending my whole life learning about this. And like, it's like the grosser side of fan culture. And I think that you don't want to totally abandon that. So you make fans feel like they don't matter at all. And they're not part of the community or whatever. I get that. But I don't, I think if you start layering in too much of that, it becomes claustrophobic and it, it, it keeps new people from joining up. And it's just not necessary. I, you know, you don't, you're a fan because you enjoy it, not because you need to be yeah. constantly feted and celebrated by the creators. Yeah. There is one, I'm going to uh, ask a question from Spencer J. Gilbert um, <laughs> this, uh, that no one I'm surprised to ask. And this is the one thing that's like, okay, as a, not a longtime Star Wars fan, but a uh, longtime Star Wars viewer, I'm sensitive, force sensitive to things like this. Luthen's going to be a Jedi or a Sith or something, right? Like he's, so. yeah, I'm, I'm putting my marker down. He's got a Kyber crystal around his neck. Mm -hmm. His spaceship has lightsabers that pop out of it. He's kind of like, he seems like a guy that's probably been in a monastery or two studying <laughs> something. He's got the hoods. I think he's going to be revealed as an I think ex, that's just so person. antithetical to what this I know, show I know, is. I know, yeah. I know. I'm just saying, I think that they've been laying the groundwork for him to be, have some kind of more bigger connection to the mystical side of Star Wars. He's just so and, mysterious and in the shadows and has like abilities that are hinted at. I, it's one of those ones where it's like, I wonder if even they put that in there just to be like, just in case yeah, we need right. to like, <laughs> you know, in case of emergency break Kyber crystal, like yeah. we can put that in there. But if not, it can just be like, he's gotta hey, die. like he, he's known for being a collector. That's like his, his front. So of course he would collect these things. So you can do it either yeah. way. Yeah, but we'll it see. does give them that out if it's like, all right, pull the rip cord. We got to get some George in there. Yeah, he <laughs> he's got to like die next year. He can't. He's gone by Rogue One. So you'd have to do that. You'd have to do that and then immediately get him out of the picture somehow, which feels the counter. Well, feels, so was, know. you know, uh, the uh, what's his face, Valerian, you know, the, the, the books say he's dead, but actually he's. Uh, gay and happy on some island somewhere so they can they can retcon um maybe, maybe he fights the shameless kid in the video game yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there you go sure um so there you go we already gave you your hint for next week um <laughs> uh I, I forget what they were but just it was the, the hierarchy the, the, the hierarchy, power yeah. hierarchy the power of a bad about honest about trailer is better than no honest trailer you know isn't that a whole <laughs> <Yeah>. thing <laughs> that's right <laughs> That's right. So we'll be back uh, in full anti-hero mode next week um, in the studio. Who's to say? On time? Who's to say? We'll no see. Promises. It's, uh, no promises. <laughs> but we I'm going to dress like Taylor Swift just so I can get really into the anti-hero game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't even know that. It's right. a song, Spencer. It's a song, <laughs> it's a song. from Midnight. I'm, it's on I'm glad I don't. Album. Just, just don't get mad at me, Taylor Swift fans. I will, I will actually won't say anything. We got to go. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs>